welcome to another Stuart the Pilot video helping you learn fast about flying and today we're talking military airspace, what it is, what it isn't and how you as a private pilot can fly through it. So you might have noticed my ear is sticking out a bit just to address that quickly. I was playing rugby a week ago and I tackled someone with my head and came off second best. So yeah, I had to go to the hospital, get some stitches put in. So it's still a bit swollen in behind, so that's why it's sticking out a bit. But I'm hoping it will go down. It actually wasn't actually a very good tackle, pretty bad. I should really maybe not make videos until this is... We're talking military airspace and in particular military aerodrome traffic zones or they're also called MATS and what they are they are just bands of airspace in the UK that surround military aerodromes and they're generally made up of a circular part of airspace which extends from the surface to 3,000 feet above aerodrome level and they sometimes have maybe one or two stubs that come off the sides and they extend from 1,000 feet above aerodrome level to 3,000 feet aerodrome level. It can be quite scary the first time you have to fly through military airspace you feel like you're sort of intruding the same way when you fly through control their space at the same time, it's quite scary. But there's really no need to me. Let's start with what a mass isn't. It is not something to be scared of. It is not something to avoid. If your route is taking you straight through a mass, you should not think, oh, I'll maybe find another route to go around it. You can keep going straight through. Something I have just found out very recently, which I wish I'd known uh, when I took my first passengers up, more of that later is that you legally do not need permission to transit a mass. Inside the mass there is the smaller aerodrome traffic zone, which is two and a half nautical miles from the runway itself. But you cannot fly through that without permission. However, the mass that surrounds the ATZ, you legally do not need permission to access that. However, you'd be silly not to because obviously in military airspace, there's a chance there's gonna be lots of fast moving planes in that area. So yeah, I would definitely recommend calling, but technically you do not have to speak to anyone when you fly through a mass. My first flight after taking the skills test, I took up some passengers and wanted to fly over St Andrews, which is in the Lukers mat. And I couldn't get hold of them, so I decided not to fly through the mats because I thought I needed permission. But however, I now realise you don't actually need permission to fly in the mat, so I could have probably just gone straight over St Andrews and had a look around because St Andrews lies outside the ATZ. If that's wrong and someone else knows better, make sure you let me know in the comments below before I start telling people the wrong stuff. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. Throughout your training to become a private pilot, you will have to do a mass penetration at some point. And a mass penetration is similar to a zone transit and that you request entry to the mats, the military airspace. And again, although I said you don't need permission, it's certainly something I highly recommend that you establish two-way communication for entering military airspace for reasons such as there can be a lot of activity and you're going to want to know about it, especially with military traffic. So let's talk about mass penetrations. That's what you want when you want to transit the mass. Now you want to get in touch with them about five minutes or 15 nautical miles before the boundary of the mass. And you want to call them up the same way you would call anyone out of you. First call for lookers would be looker zone, your call sign and request mass penetration. They will then come back to you in the usual way telling you to pass your message, you then carry on with who you are, where you are, and what are your intentions. And in this case, your intentions are that you are requesting a mass penetration. And you can then either give the route that you're planning, if you're planning to zigzag through the mats, like I wanted to fly to St Andrews, and then over the airfield, and then up to Brotty Castle. Or you can just say, I'm tracking uh, Montrose, and request a mass penetration and then they'll know that you're just sort of looking for a straight line through the mats. So yeah, you've made that initial radio call. Let's just check out my example. It's not at all perfect. Obviously, I was only 40 odd hours into my PPL at the time, so the radios are a wee bit, a wee bit fluffy, but let's check it out. Look at radar, student play side one, India Tango, request mass penetration. Play side one, India Tango, look at radar, good afternoon, post message. Student Tay side one India Tango PA28 from Cumbernauld to Dundee, currently overhead Ellsbury at 2,650 feet on 1015. Request match penetration direct from Ellsbury, St Andrews overhead, Brotty Castle. Tay side one uh, India Tango, with your basic service time. One uh, correction there, uh, I yield to me, you're over flight at 2,500 feet on the Lucas QFE 1013. Basic service, QFE1013 and did you say altitude above 2500, Tayside 1, India Tango? Roger, if you can be uh, not below 2500 feet QFE for your match crossing, uh, Squawk uh, 7402. Not 
Squawk below uh, 2,500 feet on 1013 and Squawk 7402, Tayside 1, India Tango. Tayside 1, India Tango, you match crossing approved to report approaching Brody Castle. Mass penetration approved, report approaching Brody Castle, Tayside 1, India Tango. So he came back and he said, yes, you can transit, however, can you stay above altitude to 2,500 feet? Now, I didn't really hear him properly at the time, which is why I come back and ask him again. Um, then we get that cleared up that it's, uh, he's asking me to be not below 2,500 feet above the aerodrome level on the QFE of 1013. So I come back and I say, yes, I can, I can do that. And he, and he approves me through the mats. They don't always do that. Sometimes they'll just come back and straight away say, Matt's penetration approved and you know that the airspace is obviously very quiet and you can just crack on. Important, when they say Matt's penetration approved, you have to read that back. That is not a Roger, that is a Matt's penetration approved. That is important that you read that back because it is a clearance. They'll then probably ask you to report on entering and again leaving the mats. And it's as simple as that. There's absolutely nothing to be afraid of. However, the first time you do it, it is quite daunting, which is why I'm making this video to help you guys out. However, once you've done it once, you'll realize that there's nothing to worry about and you will be absolutely fine. So just a quick video today. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please hit the like button. It really helps me out. Subscribe if you aren't already. Any questions or comments, drop them in the comments box below and I'll see you on the next video.